For 70 years, my face has been dedicated to changing the faces and transforming the lives of children and adults with facial differences. Our faces are our identities. Those who live with a difference are impacted both in body and spirit, and there's so much they must overcome. Did you know that almost every hour a baby is born with a facial difference in the United States alone? Of those, up to 7,000 babies each year will face multiple surgeries and long-term medical care throughout their childhood and into their adult life. Each year, the faces of another 100,000 individuals are disfigured through accidents or disease. People with craniofacial differences are often subjected to bullying at school or in their community. They can be made to feel inadequate or intellectually inferior, all of which can have a tremendous psychological impact that can result in feelings of isolation and low self-esteem. My Face is here to support anyone with a facial difference by providing programs, services, and access to resources and tools they need to thrive. We aim to empower the spirit, build strength in community, and let those living with a facial difference know they are never alone. Chibaro, and I have worked as the pediatric nurse practitioner at the My Face Center for Craniofacial Care at NYU Langone Health for 34 years. We see a large number of babies born with cleft lip and palate through our cleft and craniofacial programs. My Face is a nonprofit organization that serves patients and families in the craniofacial community across the country. My Face has been partnering with another nonprofit organization, Welcome Baby, to provide newborn craniofacial care kits to cleft and craniofacial teams across the country. These kits are given to cleft and craniofacial teams free of charge. By the way, these kits are amazing. The teams then give these kits to families in need. And the, the timing of giving these kits depends on whether or not the family meets uh, with a team prior to the birth of their baby, if they know that the baby is going to be born with a cleft lip, or in the case of a baby with a cleft palate, we often don't know uh, prenatally that the baby is going to have a cleft. And so when we meet those families for the first time, we then present them with this kit. My team has been receiving these kits from Welcome Baby for several years. We are really grateful that uh, over the past year, My Face has partnered with Welcome Baby and has created a craniofacial care kit that is specific to the needs of babies with cleft of and palate. Sometimes we give these kits to the families at the time of the prenatal consult, but at other times, uh, as I said before, we give the kits to the families at that first appointment with our team. When I read the book Wonder, I thought, wow, I have had to deal with some of the stuff that Augie has, and it made me feel very seen. Wonder came out almost 10 years ago, and I resonated with it so much, and I knew that it was so important to me to bring the Wonder Project to life. It makes me so happy to know that we're reaching so many students and having that impact. As the author of Wonder, what I can say, just having heard from so many people around the world, be patient with yourself, be patient with the world. Because sometimes the world doesn't understand you, but you can sort of pave the path to understanding just by being who you are, by being true to yourself, and by staying the course. Wonder Project is an anti-bullying program for students of all ages in schools across the country to learn about the importance of celebrating uniqueness being an upstander versus a bystander and always choosing to be kind. My name is Jasmine Stewart. Tally Crane. Manny Ventura. I was born with a cleft lip. 
and palate. I've had five surgeries on my face to repair my cleft. The story of how I found out I had jaw cancer, I was actually 10 years old getting x-rays for braces and found out that there was a big tumor sitting in my right sinus. And my doctors removed the roof of my mouth along with seven adult teeth. There have been many reconstruction um, operations since then. I found my face because I was actually speaking with my dentist at the time about my frustrations with wanting to live beyond being a person with a cleft palate. When I was first looking into how I was born with the cleft, I went all the way from Providence, Rhode Island to NYU just to talk to a doctor uh, to, to figure out more about cleft. And that's when Dr. Roberto Flores introduced me to my face. I found out about my face um, during the pandemic and what's inspired me to dedicate my time to the organization is that I really just don't want anyone to go through what I went through and what my family went through alone. This was the first community that I participated in um, around my craniofacial condition that I felt seen and heard. Those support group helped me do that simply by allowing me to exist. Growing up and going to hospitals was really different. I, I didn't know anyone else who had really gone through that. I really, really wish that I had had a community like my face to steer me and to provide me with a resource of just other people. The financial support that my face has given me by helping me complete my smile in a stressless way, I'm so extremely grateful for that. You know, I'm not really different than anyone else. I'm just like everyone else. There's healing power in community. I don't want anyone to feel stuck anymore. I want them to know that there's people out there to talk to and and to be there for them. I can feel the difference in how much giving and how much kindness I'm really giving to the world because of my face and the opportunities that they provided. And it's just really amazing to me because I can see that the mission uh, is just getting stronger and stronger every year. Well, I wanna be a part of the network of information, of resources and support that will help other young people get through this and thrive for the rest of their lives. That little girl in me that hated her reflection. That little girl is now a woman that is being healed. And I thank my face for being a piece of that puzzle. My face is literally saving lives. And I can tell you because it saved mine. Then we move on to a process of what I call demystifying the cleft. And then I think it's very critical and important for parents to understand the wide possibilities for what clefts can look like. But not only understanding what clefts can look like, but also what they can look like before and after reparative surgery. I think going through this process of demystifying the cleft is important for getting a parent and a couple 
ready to accept their baby when their baby is born because they can see that many other babies have had surgery with very robust results and that there's going to be a time where they look at their baby and they don't see the cleft anymore. They simply see their child. So I go through examples of the full range of clefting from very small microform unilateral clefts, such as what this young lady has, to slightly more involved incomplete clefts, to incomplete clefts with Simon Arts band and significant nasal involvement, to incomplete clefts with complete nasal collapse, to complete clefts that have loss of nasal floor and wide cleft um, diameter. And what families see as they go through these litany of different examples is that no matter what we're presented with, we can do a good job with surgery and repair. For me, bullying is so much about power. Um, you know, there's that expression, hurt people, hurt people. And, and bullies are, are by and large people who, who I find don't have power in their own lives. And so they want to take it from me. And, uh, you know, I have power in my own life. It, I don't have to give that power away. Um, so just be myself and, and smile and move on with your day. Because that person is is not coming from a place of truth. They're coming from a place of hurt. And that's a difference to me.